Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. How are you? I hope you're staying safe, healthy, and most importantly, happy. During these uncertain times, I know it's a hard time for all of us, and I don't want to tell you what to do. I have no advice for you because that's the last thing we want. All we need at this time is kindness, compassion, and support. So all I can say to you is my prayers are with you and your family. I hope. whatever problem you're going through whatever hard times you're going through i just hope all of that just goes away as soon as possible and we are always there to give you company if you're going through something please share with me in the comments below and i would be happy to to respond to that and also please i ask the community to support each other in the comments we really need some kindness and compassion especially during these times even i'm going through uh, hard times because I have been working from home for the past past 3 years and going out was my only way to relax. The more I stay home in this room it seems like I'm still working 24/7. I can't go out. It's hard. It's hard. Now I know I have to be grateful for being there with my wonderful family for having a roof on un- under over my head. I'm sorry and having food to eat. Yes, we should always be grateful for that because there are a lot of people who are having severe severely hard times but at the same time we also need to be sensitive towards the problems that people are going through so just staying home i was um experimenting with photoshop um creating new actions and i just experimented and created an action to retouch the eyes and it turned out to be a good action so i thought why not share it with you so have a look at this so this is a tutorial that i did a couple of days ago and this was about high end skin retouching by using two layers and where we dodged and burned we removed the blemishes so this is before dodging and burning this is after dodging and burning but this is about retouching eyes right so you can download the action to retouch the eyes right here or simply click the link in the description now let's go to window and actions if the actions panel is not open up opened for you you can just go to window and then simply choose actions Now to load the action once you download the action all you got to do is to click on this grid right there and then click on load actions now inside of load action locate where your action has been placed or downloaded just click on that and click on load pick some perfect retouch eyes will be loaded now let us learn how to use these actions and how can you customize that later so let's say Let's retouch this one eye. We can do the other one later or together, but for the sake of saving time, let's just do this one. All right, this is not a very high resolution image, and most of I I understand most of the photos that you would be working with won't be a very high resolution image. So I'm showing an image which is a representative of the most of the viewers who are watching this video. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Okay. So let's open this set up. Now keep in mind we cannot export actions but we can export sets. So inside the set you will find one action which is retouching eyes. All right? Select the topmost layer and then simply play it. All right? Now it's going to tell you remove the veins in the eyes. Now I have not written descriptive um you know explanations just that's why we are creating this video. Click on stop. Now it will automatically select the healing brush tool the regular healing brush tool for you it will automatically select that for you you don't have to do anything all right just make sure that the sample is current and below and just zoom in and remove the veins in the eyes to do that hold the alt key or the option key click to take a sample and then just paint over the veins simple stuff as you can see we are pretty much done Once you're done with it, we can always come back to that later. Whatever actions that you make, I always request you to make it as non-destructive as possible, and that's what I have attempted with this action. Please do that and your life will be so much simpler. All right. So let's click on the play button right there back again, and it's going to do a couple steps and now it's going to ask you to just dab in the kicker light. So click on stop. Now the kicker light is something which you just paint on the opposite side of the highlight. So let's say the highlight of the eye is right there. Just on the opposite side, we have to 
with the help of a soft round brush just dab now it will automatically select the brush for you you don't have to do anything it will automatically select white as the foreground color for you and black as the background color for you you don't have to just reset the swatches or select the colors or do any of that the action will do that for you okay just make the brush a little larger and click on that just dab once opacity and flow at 100 now you can press x the foreground color is black now and just paint on, on the areas where we didn't want it. So on the whites of the eyes, just take it away from the extra areas from the pupil. Okay, this looks pretty nice. And once you're satisfied with it, don't worry about the opacity. It will be reduced later. Just click on play. Now it's going to show you dab the highlight. So click on stop and just dab on the highlight don't worry about excess spillage it will be taken care of later play that see it is already taken care of now it's going to tell you dab the kick high so kicker lights highlight stop so this was the kicker light and just to add some more highlight you can this is optional you can just dab one more time right there or maybe this area so that is kind of optional step click on play that will be adjusted later as well now paint on the eye white this is essential to remove all of the redness or the yellowness or sometimes bluish tint from the eyes that's necessary and also brighten the eye whites a little bit so click on stop and then paint on the eye whites again it will automatically choose the brush for you it will automatically choose white as the foreground color all you have to do is to peacefully paint don't worry if it's spilling it's fine we'll take care of that later a little bit of spillage is good because it's easier to fix that later than to be very accurate with it so press x now black is the foreground color and take it away from the areas where you didn't want it looking pretty good one more thing we can do is we can zoom out and make the brush a little larger actually very large and just paint with black on the corners so take it slightly away from the corners to make it look more natural once you're satisfied click on play again now it's going to ask you to paint on the iris click on stop this is for boosting the colors of the iris right now it's going to boost it too much don't worry about it the opacity would be reduced later the reason i have set it to maximum boost right now is to be able to make you identify which colors sorry which areas are being painted all right so we have painted this just click on play again it will be reduced a little bit now it automatically opens up high pass for you this is for sharpening now all you have to do take the radius all the way to the left slowly and gradually increase it and stop it at the point where you begin to see halos so for me i'm going to choose a value of 2.4 by default i have set the value of 1.5 which works with high quality high resolution images but for this one since this is a little low resolution image, not that high of a quality, we have to choose a larger number. Hit OK. Now it's going to tell you paint on eyes for sharpness. So the areas that you want to sharpen, just paint on those areas. So with the help of the brush, it'll automatically select the brush for you. Brush is already selected. And have a look. White as the foreground color, black as the background color is automatically selected for you with the help of the action. So see, we are sharpening the eyes, sharpen the iris, nearby areas a little bit, not that much, just a little bit of sharpening of these areas. Okay, that looks pretty nice, zoom out, looks pretty good. We will be able to reduce the sharpening later, don't worry about it. Click on play again. Now it's going to tell you to paint in the iris, this is for the details in the iris stop you don't have to paint all over the iris just a couple areas see to add some extra detail and it would be very evident in high resolution images play that again and there you have it it is done let's take a look at the before and after so this is the before all the veins not that bright and it's it's just plain this is the after just look at the eye zoom out and have a better look this is the before this is the after and there's a reason why we have grouped all the layers and the reason is you can just decrease the opacity if you don't like that much of an effect 
you can decrease the overall opacity, slowly and gradually increase it to the point where you like it. So for this one, I'm going to choose 60 and it's going to be all done. And that's what we can do for our day to day workflow. If you want to pay some extra attention and if you have some more time in your hand, you can control the opacity of individual layers and control the properties individually. Let's open up this group and let's understand what each of these layers do. The first one is for removing the veins. If you zoom in, have a look. This is before you have all the veins. This is after. This one was for simply removing the veins. The second one was for kicker light right here. If you want less of a kicker light, you can choose this and simply decrease the opacity. If you want more, you can increase the opacity. If you want more than 100% opacity, which you won't in most cases, you can double this layer or simply just increase the curves even more. But anyway, I think the value, the default value was 75 for this action. You can decrease it if you want to. So I'm going to go with about 55 for this image. For your image, it might be 75, it might be 100. Totally depends upon your image. This is for the eye highlight, right? So if you decrease the opacity, see the highlight area is not much highlighted. So how much you want? For this 100 is fine. The iris shine, the extra shine we added to the iris. In this case, it was very little, so it doesn't matter in this case. Brightening the eye whites, this one is important. By default, it's set to 50%, okay? So, and if we take it to 100, it begins to look unrealistic. So we can take it to about, let's say, 50% was fine, but let's go for 45. Now, eye whites, this is for removing color cast from the eye whites. So, if we just turn it off, you will see the redness in the eyes to come back. If you turn it on, redness, yellowness and everything goes away. If you want a decreased opacity of that, you can opt for it. So let's go for 75. This one is for boosting the iris color. If you turn it off, the iris doesn't have much color. If you turn it on, the iris has a little more color. This is just for adding some vibrance. So if you go to the properties right now, 50 is the number. If you increase it, there will be more color. If you decrease it, there will be less. So if you want more color out of this, you can actually increase it to 74. And then this is for sharpening the eyes. So if you want more sharpening, increase the opacity, less sharpening, decrease the opacity. You can also change the high pass values by clicking on this arrow button right there and double clicking on the high pass will allow you to change the high pass values. Similarly, for the iris detail, uh, details, there's one more high pass. So if you click on this arrow right there, double click on the high pass, you can change the high pass values for the iris. If I increase it, it's looking a little interesting for the value of nine. And now let's take a look. Here's the before, here's the after. If you want more, you can increase it. I think for me, I'm going to go with 55. Now let's take a look. Just collapse the group, click on this arrow. Here's the before. Here is the after looking so much better. And even now, if you feel it's kind of too much, you can decrease the opacity. And this time I'm going to keep it at about 75. Now we could have done it for the other eye simultaneously, but to save time, we did not do it. I have a lot of other actions if you're interested. So I have this very nice action called um, enhance color. And this is one of my favorites, Enhance with Saturation Mask. If I click on that and if I play that action, it uses a saturation mask that allows you to increase the saturation without oversaturating areas which doesn't have a lot of color. So this is a very natural way to just boost the colors of an image. I really love it. So it gives you a hue saturation layer with a mask in there that is a saturation mask. And let's say I increase it to about 40. Look how amazing it looks. It just makes the colors pop, right? Now, some of you might be thinking, well, this is the same as Vibrance. Actually, it's not. So if I show that to you, if we create a Vibrance adjustment layer, if we increase it, and you will see that it's just not as natural as the hue saturation one. Look how natural this one is. If you look at the Vibrance one, it's not very natural. The skin is going all too colorful. But in this one, the skin stays natural. The lip just pops uh, amazingly. And it's just uh, one of my favorite ways to do it. Maybe Vibrance might look better on landscapes, but this is worth a try. So do you want it? 
Well, let me put that in download as well. This is an action for enhancing color. All right, I hope this action gives you some opportunities to experiment with your images and portraits and maybe landscapes if you're playing with enhanced color action. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for spending your time with me. And I would like to take this time to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Actually, they're just the ones who are supporting me during these uncertain times. I'll see you again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.